You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building, Miss Jackie Christie. Hey. Oh, man, Jackie Christie <laughs> from Basketball Wives. You've been in the rumor report a lot lately. I know. Isn't that something? And it ain't all good. But yeah. that's okay, though. Well, let's start with some good things. Okay. Let's start off like that. So you and Doug Christie mm -hmm. renew your vows every single year. Yeah. And I see you guys have a book out also. Yeah. Talking about, I guess, how to make your marriage and love last and work. Yeah. We actually wrote this book. Um, it was our first book. It's called mm -hmm. No Ordinary Love, A True Story of Marriage and Basketball. We've been together, you know, 20 plus years. We've been married for 21 years now. We just had our 21st wedding. We went to Napa. Wow. And uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people counted us out. They said we wasn't going to make it, but... That's my best friend, and, you know, we ride together. Well, they, they used to say y'all weren't going to make it because you used to be so, you used to, like you had them on a leash, seemed like. like <laughs> they you, were like, you know she's what? everywhere with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what, yeah. literally, and if y'all ever seen that promo, we was actually doing our show for uh, BET, which was the Christie's Committee, and I put that Gucci dog leash around his neck, you know, <laughs> to make fun of what everybody was saying. It's like, why can't this African-American man, or just man, period, mm -hmm. love his wife? And he's an athlete. He can still be a jock and be sexy and all that. But he just respects his queen, and he is my king. So, yeah, And you should keep your woman around you. That's how you stay out of trouble. There it is. That's right. <laughs> that's the and truth that's to the, the matter. And it's, it's interesting because a lot of people feel like reality TV has ruined a lot of relationships. Mm -hmm. Has it caused any strain? Because I'm sure it's hard for him to watch the show. Yeah. And he sees a lot of drama happening with you on the show in particular. Yeah. You know what? And it's gotten harder, Angela. They, it used to be where he you know, was watching it. It was exciting. But now, with especially with this season, it's getting to the point where he's kind of like, eh. You know, because it really infuriates him. It makes him upset. And he knows that this is not, you know, his wife. And, you know, but you, you don't want to step in either. You want to let me handle it. So. Mm -hmm. so why do you continue to do it? Because if it is having a little strain on a relationship. Um, you know what? Got to pay for them weddings every year. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. It's a nice check. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know what? I really feel like, you guys, I had a show before Basketball Wise. When they asked me to join it, I had never even watched Miami. And it was a cast of six women. I felt like, you know what? I'm strong. I'm a leader anyway. This will be a good way for me to dispel all all the rumors our show had came to an end so I came on to this show and it's my baby I built this and you know I've been here I cultivated it I built the audience and that's why I continue to do it because it's a thing with me now where this is my following this is my legacy that I'm leaving behind now Evelyn is back this season and so is Jennifer yeah and that's been some drama for you because you and Evelyn have been butting heads mm -hmm. and so where does all of this stem from you know what? When I met Evelyn a long time ago, it was just in passing, and I kind of knew of her. She knew of me. Then when all that happened with my daughter and she donated money, everybody started hitting me up. Oh, my God, Jackie, she's trying to get on the show. You know, she ain't really got nothing going on. She's coming for you. And I'm thinking, why is she coming for me? Her and my daughter's relationship is totally separate from me, so she ain't coming for me. But when she joined the show, I gave her the benefit of the doubt. We met at Shawnee's party. I said, is this what you came for? She said, no. I said, okay, cool. I'm glad to know you came under better pretenses. And then as the season went on, I started seeing what she really was there for. Now, let's discuss the whole thing with Evelyn and your daughter. So your daughter her, had a son, mm -hmm. and the son was burned in mm -hmm. the daycare center, mm -hmm. right? And she started a GoFundMe account, mm -hmm. and Evelyn donated to that account. Right. Did she know your daughter prior to that? No. Evelyn does, does not know my daughter. She didn't know her. And my daughter actually is now saying she didn't start it. Some other person started it. So it's really a... a web of lies and just mess and I try to stay out of it that's why I really didn't say much and I said my one statement at the beginning and that was if my daughter had have called me and asked me for money when I was on TMZ she would have gotten the money but I had already been giving her money I give her money I take care of her so it wasn't about the money now how old it your was, daughter for people who don't she's know. 28 mm -hmm. 28 years old why is she estranged she, you know, it's her choice. Mm -hmm. I love her, Charmaine. I mean, I, I love all my kids. I've always spoiled them. They've always lived a privileged life. And it ain't about the material thing. It's about me not having a lot when I was little. And when I grew up and was successful, I made sure they had everything they needed and wanted. And I guess I just was a little too overprotective and gave them a little too much. Now, is she the only one from not from Doug Christie? Yes. Could it be that feeling, like she feels like she is yeah. not really connected? Mm -hmm. And yeah. she has expressed Definitely. that that is how she feels. That's that right. she gets uh, no fa like the other children have favoritism over her. That's what she feels, and it's never been. And I even, you know, I'm a, I'm the type of person I'll ignore a lot of the hate. I've been getting hated on my whole life, but I decided let me post her life a little bit so y'all can see. As you see, everything is the same with all my children. They're all my kings and queens. So. It's unfortunate Kari feels that way. I'll keep loving her. I'm her mother. I'm not going to throw her under the bus. There's a lot I could do, a lot I could do to dispel a lot of this, but it would be putting her out there. How does Doug treat her? Loves her. 
treated her like she was his own. That's why it hurts his heart right now. Mm -hmm. Like, he's very upset. He don't even want to talk about it. Like, you know, when it first started coming out six years ago, you know, he cried. He mm -hmm. said, this is not the daughter I raised. I tried to be the best father to her. I don't know why she's acting this way and doing this. And then he just took a back seat. When did she it. start feeling that way? At what age? Um, She started acting up probably about six years ago. She started doing this. So she's about 21, 22? Yeah, probably right around when she started having kids and being with this guy she's with. And, you know, she wanted more. He wants more. You know, well, your parents got this. And why don't they buy you a Range Rover? Why they buy you a Toyota? Mm. That type of thing. It's like, that's a brand new car. Her Did you first buy the other car. kids Range Rovers and just her the Toyota? No, oh, no. Okay. She was her, the first one. And I was like, I'm not going to buy you. You don't even know how to drive. I'm not well, going to go out and buy you a Range Rover. What kind of cars do the other kids have? <laughs> they, oh, well, now. <laughs> they may not I mean, be Rangers, <laughs> but they might be better than yeah, Toyota. No, the, <laughs> my son isn't even driving age yet. He's okay. only 15, 16. And then Shani has a sports car. But it's, you know, she just got car? it like. It's like a Chrysler, but it's like a 2016 or something, 15. Her dad bought it for her, but we waited till she was 22, 23 gotcha. years old, you know, and she earned it. And Takari, we gave her one at 18. Is Takari you know? in Doug's will? Yeah. Takari yeah. has even said that Takari Doug... Takari gets $8 million. Takari has even said that oh, Doug oh, 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 has always... Oh, 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 what, what, what? Excuse if, me. If Doug or I was to pass, Takari yeah. gets $8 million. That's a good lump sum. Maybe she wants me to pass. I don't no, know. No, don't Does say that. Does she know that? Yeah. Oh, but you what do the other kids get? $8 million. Oh, it's good. Then she and it ain't a off. lot, but I mean, it's okay. that's a lot of money. It's ridiculous. That's a lot what of but money. here's the thing: you did post that she did wish you a happy Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. You know, just this year. So you think that it's the people around her influencing her to definitely. Kari, not only did she wish me a happy Mother's Day, Kari and I talk on the phone like any mother and daughter. We giggle, we laugh, we talk about her relationship. I'm like, Kari, what is going on? Why is all this on the internet? Won't you stop it? Mom, I don't know why they doing that. It ain't me. It ain't me. That's what she says. I have proof. So it's kind of like, you know, the, the Kari that I'm dealing with, my daughter, is a whole different person than this internet garbage that's out there. Did you know she, her, your, your granddaughter, was a granddaughter or grandson that was grandson. burnt? Did you know your grandson was burnt? Mm-hmm. She called me and told me I was in Atlanta doing a play, and she called and told me what happened, and I was going to come there. And she was like, no, he's fine, Mom. He's bandaged up. The baby's dad was there. His parents were there. I'm like, okay. She was like, I'll give you pictures. I'll keep you up to date. So we were talking constantly. Did I was like, do you need anything? She was like, no, I'm so fine. You didn't, so you didn't know she needed money or allegedly needed money? She didn't need money. On top of the daycare being at fault, paying for everything, that wasn't it. And when the GoFund came out, when Evelyn did donate, it had been out for months before she did that. Mm -hmm. They made it go viral after me and Doug got married in the show. We did it on VH1 in Portugal. So it was a big deal. Kari wasn't at the wedding. She felt some type of way, but she had just had a baby. Right. So, you know what I mean? And I had she offered was her to come. Yeah, she, of course. She's invited to all my weddings. So, so, is it, so is it one of those things where they know y'all got money, so they're like, why your grandson got a GoFundMe? Y'all got money. You shouldn't exactly. have But I, I was wondering okay. when I seen it, doesn't she have health insurance? Cause, yes. Cause usually the hospital, you don't need money. You That's know, right. usually even, yeah. I know my daughter just had a, a $22,000 bill when she was sick. Oh, but regardless, only had to pay 10%. That's right. Which, which is $2,000. So I, I was wondering what money would she need if she had health insurance? That's exactly right. And on top of that, the... The daycare was paying everything. Right. You know, it's their fault. He was in their care. So I'm going, why are you guys making this? This is my daughter. I love my grandson. I love all my kids and their kids. But you're making it like it's me and attacking me. And what am I supposed to do? Whatever they need, I'm here. Why didn't you donate to the GoFundMe, though? I'm not going to never donate to a I mean, publicly, why would I need to do that when you can call me and I can go to Western Union or I could go and cash app you like gotcha. I've been doing for 20 years? That would be for your mom years. to donate to your own GoFundMe. Yeah, that, that doesn't even make sense. But you said your daughter didn't create that. You, she said somebody yeah, else created that. Somebody. So right. do we know where that money went? or? Yeah, well, she ended up with 19000 17000 something like that. And I heard that it went to... Tennis shoes and oh, so your daughter did weed and oh yeah, weed. she got it and yeah, everybody else got it, you know, and that's what hurt my feelings because it's like the public. That's I will never mislead the public. Bit. Well, it's, it's not no, it's, and it's not it's not throwing my daughter. It wasn't hers. It was the she people said somebody she's around, else started a GoFundMe, you know, and gotcha. it was them that spent the money. It wasn't even you know, it didn't even really go to my grandma. Oh, so your daughter never got none of that money. She got it in her hands, but they they it, took it, from it got. Spent all up is what I'm hearing. I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't ask her. We've talked a lot of times since then. And, you know, she's in a good mood whenever I talk to her. So that's why it's shocking to me when I wake up to tweets and garbage on the Internet. I just got to the point now where I just block it out. So your daughter has terrible influences around her. Terrible.
terrible. And I'm just going to be real with that. And that's not the one of us that's keeping it real. Now, she also has a tell all book coming out later on this month mm-hmm. that's about you. And some of those excerpts have leaked yeah. online. And she said a lot of things about you. Is anything that she said true? Like no. She said you used to be a scammer. And you used to- <laughs> what kind of scammer you used to be? Yeah, she said, I guess I was a drug dealer and I taught you know, one of the biggest drug dealers how to deal drugs and all of this stuff. Can't you and it's sue so somebody sad. for putting out yeah, false you can. information and you have can. that book not actually come out if it's not true? Yeah, and the only reason I hadn't yet gotten to that point is I, you know, she had been doing this for, this has been going on six, seven years now. It's getting heavier now. I guess we on season seven of the show, mm-hmm. you know, I'm more popular. They just really feel like, and the girl she's messing with was in her life before. We actually gave her $3,500 a couple years ago because she was threatening to Kari saying, I did all this publicity for her. And, you know, Kari called me crying. Mom helped me. I said, listen, I don't get involved in this garbage, but because you're my daughter, I'm going to pay these people this money for this publicity thing and all of that because at the time it was supposed to be legit Mm -hmm. they're helping her so-called with her career found out it was all bogus and this is the same person now going around saying i'm about to become a millionaire off jackie and them no the fuck you're not is your daughter bipolar is that the is is it bipolar because it seems like one day she talks to you in this and then next day she writes a book right so she she was she always bipolar Um, Well, we noticed when she got in high school. She's always went to Christian academies, private schools. All my kids did. My mom, I retired her when my kid, when Kari was a baby and said, you know, she worked at the hospital. You come take care of my daughter. I'll make take care of all your bills, mom. I just wanted my mom with me because we're best friends. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and I have six sisters and five, you know, three brothers. So Kari started acting out in high school. She finally, you know, I want to go to public school. You're sheltering me, blah, blah. I put her in public school in Sacramento. And she was like, no, the kids don't like me. They keep calling me dark-skinned, blah, blah. I said, Kari, you're beautiful. We did everything we could. We went up to the school, everything. That's when we got her diagnosed, and they said, you know. She was bipolar? Yeah. Why would you have to be a scammer if you was married to Doug Christie all those years? Well, no, this is before <laughs> Doug Christie. But yeah. you've been together 20-plus years. You got to see you. she had her daughter, Takari, before. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Got before you. she was married. Yeah, no. no. Takari, daddy, a drug dealer? And Takari's father was. Well, you was probably running a little no, dope. I wasn't. <laughs> probably no. a little drug mule. I mean, no. I'm not going to lie. I did uh-uh. do the little return to clothes. I never really bought. <laughs> did you do? Yeah, oh, yeah, the clothes thing. And I'm like, stealing and returning clothes, girl. You was a booster? That's what she, I mean, they said I was a booster. I said, Lord Jesus. <laughs> what what else did I do? What's her daddy now? He's uh, still incarcerated. Oh, he's still locked yeah, up. Yeah, he had like a long-term incarceration. Is he in her life at all? Do they speak? Um, you know what? I think they start speaking, and everybody's like, well, that you know, whole thing from the jail is probably what else is influencing her to do this whole book thing. I don't know. Me and him was on good terms. He knew that I met Doug, and I told him about Doug, and he said they we had a meeting before me and Doug ever got serious, and he said, all I want is if he's going to be in Takari's life is for him to always respect my daughter. No problem. That's what we did anyway. And How did you meet Doug? That's the last I talked to him. I met Doug in Seattle at a sports bar through a mutual friend that had been telling us for years, like, you guys would be great to meet each other. He was still in college at Pepperdine. Mm-hmm. How long was the drug dealer locked up at that point? Um, he had been locked up for, like, 10 years. Oh, yeah, you was good. Long time. Yeah, you was yeah, good. Yeah, long time. Now, listen, he, got honest, he got life. Um, I think 50 years or something. I don't Sheesh. really know. I, I tend to, like, because I don't want people to be like, oh, she's throwing him under, because I have nothing but respect Gosh. for Tyrone. That's her dad's name. Tyrone. Feel- That's a drug dealer <laughs> name. Oh, <laughs> Tyrone. But, but Kari, you know, she feels like you gave, you know, my sister and brother preferential treatment, which is not true. And they've even said it to her. And then when she talks to me on the phone, it's like, Mom, these people are crazy. I know I had a good life and I still have one. It's them, you know, and it's like... As a mom, this is difficult, though, because obviously you love your daughter. You know she's having some issues and things that she's going through. So you can't throw your daughter under the bus. And I'm sure you wish you had a better handle on the situation. I really do. And I wish we could show the world our relationship. But at this point, she's dead set on making millions of dollars for this book for her kid's father and her and all of these other people. She's not looking at after this is all done and you put this this thing out here and I sue you guys. Then what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Our relationship will then become a serious situation. Right now, I have nothing but love for my daughter. I'm going to continue to love her. But it's going to get real ugly if they continue to slander my name. Now, you also said some negative things about Evelyn's daughter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I I'm, I would hope that you regret saying that because you said I her do. daughter um, was a builder whore. Yeah, I do. And I, I shouldn't have repeated a what I had whore? heard. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> because she had been, you guys don't understand, when we're shooting that show, people are doing stuff. And I'm telling her, you need to back up. You know the truth about my family. You know my daughter is doing this and it's not true. Leave me the fuck alone or I'm going to start coming for you. So that's why I said, what if I was to 
sit up here and do this to you? And that was my question to her. And I told her on the show, I apologize. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've apologized to her several times. Bitch, I'm not going to keep apologizing to you over and over again. You're going to take it or not. It's out there and it's on TV. So So is what you're doing to me. Right. This is crazy that this is all happening and the reunion is actually about to go down. So And it goes down. And I mean, I didn't want it to, but she got on there and started that same crap. And it's going to continue to do that. You can say what you want. All you guys, say what you want about me. But you're messing with my children and my family. That's where I draw the line. Now, they said you didn't know your grandson's birthday. I don't. I seriously don't. Really? I don't know his birthday. I don't know half my sisters and brothers' birthdays. I got so much on my mind, Charmaine. I got companies. I got to leave a legacy for my kids and their kids. I don't think about that kind of stuff, but I'm sure you're going to call me and say, Mom, you going to send him some gifts? His birthday's next week, just like you do all the other times. But if you, want to, leave a leg- if you want to leave a legacy for him, you should know his birthday. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I probably, I got a lot going on. I don't know his birthday. That's I'm not going to sit up and lie. They yeah. asked me and no, I don't. I know when he was born, I sent Christmas and gifts and I got all the receipts for that. I, these are my family. And that don't dictate whether you love somebody because you don't know their birthday. How many grandkids do you have? I have, she has three boys. She's pregnant right now with a granddaughter now. Mm-hmm. And then I have one da- granddaughter by Chantel. So I have a whole soccer field full of grandkids, and I love it. It's amazing. Now, how do you feel about when you are you do you watch basketball wise like when it comes on? And so when you watch everything that's happening and the editing, do you feel like it's fair to you? Um, I don't watch their parts, some of the rude stuff the girls say, because I'm an emotional person, and if I watch it, and it bothers me. So mm-hmm. I fast forward through their parts, but I hear about what they've said. I love the parts that I'm in. I'm only going. You only can edit what I give you. You know what I mean? Right. So I don't, I've never been one to say, oh my God, Shed or VH1, fuck me up and they edited it wrong. I have seen certain things where it might have happened before this scene, but it's playing different. And I understand that. That's doing a television show. I'm a producer. So I get it. Mm-hmm. You know, I understand that. Jeez, it has to be such a burden to be on that show because sometimes I'm watching it and I'm like, man, there's a lot of <laughs> arguing, a lot yeah. of back and forth. But then, you know, there's the, the nice things that happen, like relationships that get repaired. Yeah. I didn't think you in Malaysia would ever be and she's coming to your defense yeah you know a lot so that has to feel good that at least you feel like you form some real friendships and relationships from the show and i do you know and it's hard this is a doggy dog world out there especially in reality tv especially on a show like this every is all every man for himself that's why i always stay a loner on the show if you notice i don't need nobody to have my back i can deal with it you can put me in any situation it doesn't matter because i got me regardless and if you write and your heart is pure you always gonna win out and it's good for malaysia and i to finally be at a place where we really respect each other we're both leos my trust level is very low with people because they always smile and do this and then next thing you know they you know trying to cut your throat Mm-hmm. But what she's, about Shawnee and you now? Because Shawnee's not 100% sure that you guys are friends. <laughs> Shawnee, you know, that's kind of a touchy thing. I, I laugh only because I was surprised this season how it played out. I thought me and her was tighter than that. And I don't think that we're not tight. I just feel like she got caught up. She brought Evelyn. I think they had intention for Evelyn to come and do all this big old stuff. It didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And Evelyn felt, I'm going to go and I'm going to tear Jackie down. And that's going to be my storyline and build me up. And it, it just didn't pop off like that. So I think Shawnee was shocked. She didn't expect me to go as hard as I did on Evelyn because usually I just let people say whatever. Call me crazy, lie, do whatever y'all want to do, and I'll keep launching my businesses and doing me. That shit came to a halt this season. So I think that put a strain on me and Shawnee. And where we at now, if people tune into the reunion, they're going to see. Man, cause... It seems like everybody who goes against Shawnee Winds up getting kicked off the show, though. I mean, it's her show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> and you know, and not, not to throw Shawnee under the bus, I, people blame her as being the person to hire and fire. Shawnee don't hire and fire. She don't, that ain't my employer. Mm. That's, I, I'm, I'm hired by Viacom, VH1, and Shed. That's what cuts my checks. Mm-hmm. Shawnee is a cast member to me. And that's why when people ask me, whoa, do you whoa, feel whoa, uncomfortable whoa. with, you know, the executive producer being on the show? I'm like, no, because I'm an executive producer. So, okay. you know what I mean? Oh, you I, I got, a show too? Not a that show, my show. Okay, gotcha. In my gotcha. life. So I just feel like with Shawnee, Johnny, you know, all due respect to her and stuff. She's doing her thing. But and, she has some influence, I'm sure. She can, I mean, she can. She's a know. creator. She created. Jackie Shawnee well, she got can, a lot of influence. <laughs> nah, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm, I'm not like saying this, she Jackie. don't. I'm not. I'm <laughs> saying you don't have influence in nothing on my life. Mm. But we on her thing. Fired. No. Nah, that'll not be <laughs> I don't believe it. 
That'll never happen. Don't don't know, don't kid yourself. Shawnee, no. challenge. Shawnee O'Neal <laughs> would not do that because Shawnee O'Neal knows no, who what? Jackie You'll is. Stab her in the neck too? No, she knows. No, Shawnee, she's a businesswoman at the end of the day, and I wouldn't want to get me fired if I was her. So you say you make the show? You part of? Oh, her. I am the show. Woo! I mean, I'm not even being. I, and anybody you ask would say that, and I'm not saying it in a cocky sort of way. Yes, I'm saying are. it in That's a way. Of, no, <laughs> being yeah. a reality. Star, I understand what it takes to be on a show like this, and I bring everything. I'm transparent. I get it. I live and breathe it. I was born to do what I do, and that's why it's natural. People that say Tammy well, make the show. Tammy, Tammy is awesome. Evelyn. Me and Tammy together, that's my tag team Tammy partner. Long. So, yeah, Tammy, that's my, what about my baby. Evelyn, Evelyn, they say Evelyn is... is, is well, well, Jackie, Evelyn needs to go back to obscurity. When Shawnee fires you, will you come back up here and talk to us about it? <laughs> when, when, when Shawnee fires me, I would love to come and talk to you guys about it because that would be the day that I launch my own show and then all the viewers will go with me. You hate Evelyn like that, though? Oh, I, I Evelyn. Now, let me ask you this, though. You see Evelyn's going through a lot because now it's come out that she's no longer engaged and she's oh, been broken up poor baby. for quite some time. <laughs> were, you, were you aware <laughs> of that or is this something that you just found out as the rest of us found out that... The okay, I have to be off. honest, you guys. I can't lie. I said I wouldn't do it. If I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk for real. I had heard about it. The streets was talking some time ago. So that's what else pissed me off. It's like you're on, a sh- on my show, basically, on the show that I've cultivated, meaning I've been here the whole time, me and Malaysia, and now you're up here perpetrating you want to do all this and have kids and do all that. I'm not saying she don't, but you're falsifying things for the public image. And you tearing my family down at the same time. But see, I never tried to hurt her and go at her like that. So I just want to make that clear. If I was trying to hurt these women, there's things I could do. What about you and Jennifer? Do you guys get along? Who is that? Jennifer's on the show too. You right? went oh, to is school she? with Jennifer now. Jennifer, yeah, Jennifer's on the show. Yes, oh, okay. I, 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 so she was one of the guest appearances oh, on the show this season. Okay. Because they were first seasoners yeah. on Basketball Wives. That's how we are. Wives. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer to me is Miami, and um, you know. Mm-hmm. When Jackie says you know, she don't want to get disrespectful. Can, yeah, I don't want to be. Can you and Evelyn ever make up? That would be hard, Angela. Because there's done, a lot of people on that show. I never thought you would be cool with. Yeah, but Evelyn, ooh, she took it to another level. Like I ain't never saw black like I saw black with her. Meaning just anger. But you black did say anger. you wanted to stab her daughter, though. Oh <laughs> no, I didn't. You, said you wanted to stab her daughter? No. She called oh. her a builder whore. Yeah, but then you say, I, I, and you say I you thought want, I wanted to stab her. You say, yeah. Oh, you say you want to stab Evelyn? Went, yeah, and she oh, went and got okay, a okay. taser and all of that. I mean, I, I won't never say never, but I say that it, it would take a lot, and I'm I'm not going to ever apologize to that girl again. You called her daughter a builder whore? I said that's Where, where are you, Envy? <laughs> People, people don't want you to. People don't want you to like the same, the same way you don't want people to play with your kids. You can't play with you other people's kids. That's right, Charmaine. And I felt that's bad right. when I was watching that, that scene. Yeah. And she was crying, and her daughter was crying. Yeah, you should cry. Look what you're doing to me. You lying on me. You talking to my daughter. I said, Evelyn, stop talking to my daughter. You know she's, you know, got some things going on, emotional things, whatever. That's my kid though, and I love her. You don't. You're doing this for money, for a check. Stop communicating with her. Stop. And she. I ain't talking to her. And then you go on Instagram and there it is. Hi, Kari. How are you? Da-da-da. You mm. know, and it's like, you know what? You're going to keep fucking with me. That's why I said I'm going to start fucking with you now. If you said you were going to stab me in the neck, I might tease you too. Well. <laughs> <laughs> what does Doug say about all of this to you, though? Like, does he watch sometimes and be like, Jackie, you getting out of character now? No, and- he was so upset. He didn't watch this season, but he heard about it because, you know, they tagged him. And he was like, look. I'm really tiring of this BS. These women need to understand and respect you. You true to this. You're not new to this. You are a basketball wife. You're my wife. And I don't like what I'm hearing. And it's getting to the point where some of them is getting desperate and they better try to fall back. That's how he feels about it. Same way Tammy's man do. When did you ever, when did you least, uh, loosen up Doug's collar? Like when did you, <laughs> when did you, when did you make When did I take the longer? leash off? No. Yeah. Me and Doug has always, Charmaine had a great relationship. We just, you know, I think as I grew and we grew together, people just started realizing that she ain't got no leash on him. Doug is doing him and I'm doing me. We love each other. You sure you didn't like make the leash longer as he got older? Like he don't <laughs> got the energy to go out there and no. run around like he used to. No, Charmaine, he fine as hell. Sex is good. He's doing his thing. He's successful. He's commentating. He's traveling with the team still. So he's still doing the same things he was doing. He's just not on the court, mm-hmm. but he, he's doing everything else. So. Now you talk about all your other businesses. So mm-hmm. I know you had uh, done the cognac. Mm-hmm. So tell us what all your other businesses are, just so we can know when you say, I got all these businesses. I have the Bizarre Cognac. It's in 84 stores in uh, Los Angeles. We're going to branch it out. 
Um, I also have a wine coming out. We touched on that this season. So I'm sure within the next, you know, few months you'll see that. I have, you know, my clothing line. I have these books. I have, you know, my production company. I'm traveling right now currently around the country with Darren Henson, and we're doing the Truth About Your Money Summits, which is all around with, you know, five or six other motivational women doing, you know, different seminars and everything, just really inspiring and motivating people and showing them different things. I'm talking to them about reality TV and how to flip it into a business. It's a platform, but at the same time, you know what I mean? You can't just go in it for the 15 minutes or whatever. you got to turn that into... You know. Now, if you could give one tip to people on what kept your relationship so strong for all of these years, over 20 years, mm -hmm. what would you say has been the key to your marriage lasting? I would have to definitely say commitment and dedication because you're going to have ups and downs. I'm not saying we've been perfect. We have arguments. It could be over food. It could be over whatever, a misunderstanding of a text, anything. But it's about communication, being able to talk to each other and having that intimacy. That's why I wrote the book into, you know, this one right here, um, because a lot of relationships is missing that and that ain't just about sex that's about being able to know what that other person you know thinking for them knowing what they want I feel like a woman wants to be treated special from when she wakes up in the morning to when she goes to bed at night mm -hmm. she don't want to be ignored during the day and then all of a sudden you get into bed and it's like you know can we get busy mm -hmm. no that's not you know intimacy starts when you wake up and for a man what do you do for him um, make him I, feel special all day <laughs> I would definitely say for women be his biggest fan whatever he's doing support him in that whether you like it or not if you, there's things you don't like about it find different ways to compromise and help him and tell him why you don't don't just yell and scream and you know demand this and demand that he'll want to be like Charmelaine said on that leash if you treat him right Charmelaine <laughs> Charmelaine <laughs> I can't pronounce it I'm sorry you know, I got nothing but love for Char you baby <laughs> Charmelaine. Right. <laughs> well, Miss Jackie, Christy, we appreciate you for joining us. Thank you. And good luck. You know, your We're going to be watching help. the reunions. Thank you. And you need to get your daughter help. I know she's, she's grown up and she wants to be on her own, but she, if she's that way by a po bipolar, you should really get her some help. Try to. Yeah, I've tried everything and I'm going to continue the rest of my life. And Definitely. I'm telling you, she got really bad people around her. They're plotting on killing you right now because they know they can get $8 million. There it is. They I'm dead serious. Not. And I shouldn't have probably said that, so retract that. But, I mean, I'm just <laughs> an honest person. Shit. <laughs> Sorry. Jeez, all right. Well, all it's right, the Breakfast Jackie. Club. It's Miss Jackie Christie.